This video is about a mistake that I made. I unlocked the interstellar mastery camo in Modern Warfare 3, and I'm here to tell you why you shouldn't do the same. This video is going to be a bit of a rant about unlocking mastery camos in Call of Duty, some of the things that I think they did well for these challenges, and some changes that I would really like to see for Black Ops 6 when it comes out next month. But most of all, let this video serve as a warning. If you're not a content creator who's desperate to find something to do, something to stream after the Black Ops 6 beta ended, don't do the Mon Warfare 3 camo challenge. It is 100% not worth it. Even if Interstellar looks kind of nice, that kind of nice effect is not worth the amount of frustration and time spent on it. So let's start off just for people who don't know what mastery camos in Call of Duty are. For a long while now in Call of Duty, there have been camos on guns and you can unlock them by completing challenges. In some games, it used to be things like get this many headshots with a gun. In some games, it got a little bit more complicated and it was things like get this many kills while sliding or get this many revenge kills or this many kills while the enemy is looking away from you. Just little things that you could do with a weapon to kind of show your mastery of that weapon. To even unlock some of the camo challenges, you had to level the gun up. So normally you'd have to level the gun up all the way to max level and then take on these camo challenges. And if you completed every single camo challenge for a particular weapon, you would unlock the gold mastery one. I think it's called Gilded in Modern Warfare 3. And you didn't just get handed the gilded or the gold camo, you also had to complete a challenge to unlock that one. Normally something like getting so many kills in one life 15 times. Then, if you managed to complete the gold camo challenge on every weapon within a category, say every single assault rifle in the game, you would then unlock the platinum challenge. Despite doing these over the last few days, I've already forgotten what they're called in Modern Warfare 3. But the Platinum Challenge is another one you can complete on each weapon. In theory, it should be a slightly more difficult challenge that you need to complete on each weapon. And then if you complete all of the Platinum Challenges for every weapon category, so you have now leveled up every weapon in the game and completed every unique challenge for it, you then unlock another set of challenges in Modern Warfare 3, they're called Priceless. And if you manage to complete the Priceless Challenge on every single weapon in the game, then you unlock the Mastery Camo, which is, in Modern Warfare 3, Freeze case interstellar. At the launch of the game, this is a gargantuan task because it really did mean you had to get to grips with every single weapon, every single weapon type. You had to basically become a master of them in order to complete the challenges. Well, I say that you didn't actually need to get good with the guns because most of the challenges just involved doing something kind of irritating lots and lots of time. So you didn't actually have to get good with the gun. You just had to spend a long time with it. If you are a really good player, you can do these challenges much, much faster. And if you're not very good, they're going to take you a long while. But everybody who has completed the Interstellar Mastery Camo Grind isn't necessarily a good player. They might just be people who are willing to spend a long while to do them. Now, thankfully, there's actually a few things that makes the Interstellar Grind a little bit easier now. You don't need to do every single weapon because the number of weapons required to unlock the extra challenges in each category haven't changed since launch, but lots of new weapons have been added to the game. You had to complete that priceless camo challenge on 36 weapons in the game, which was all of them at launch. Well, all of them on Warfare 3 weapons at launch. But now because lots more have been added, you only have to complete 36 out of the weapons available. For me, that meant I could skip battle rifles, marksman rifles, sniper rifles, some of the launchers and melee absolutely completely. I didn't need to run around trying to use a sledgehammer to get 50 kills in the game. All I needed to do was focus on assault rifles, SMGs, shotguns, LMGs, and the bow and arrow because I thought that would be funny. Oh, and pistols, which are weirdly left off some guides on how to do this. I've got no idea why, but the pistol challenges are pretty easy to do, to be honest. That's a good little tip for you. So I've spent most of my streams since the Black Ops 6 beta ended 
just trying to complete these challenges. I'd already leveled up all of the weapons thankfully because I'd actually completed the other mastery camo which was for the zombies mode MWZ way back when the game launched because I wanted to make more zombies content and there isn't actually that much to do in MWZ. And I genuinely think this is part of the reason I don't like MWZ that much, that I spent dozens of hours in it just running around killing big groups of zombies. And that was it, it was completely pointless. Some of the challenges required you to do things like killing specialist zombies, or sometimes you had to kill some of the human enemies in it, but it was all pretty much just repeatedly doing the same thing without any challenge, because MWZ, once you've got to grips with it, is incredibly easy. I figured the multiplayer ones would at least be a bit more interesting because multiplayer is interesting kind of by its very nature. You never know who you're going to be up against. You never know what they're going to play like. Sometimes you'll have really good games. Sometimes you'll have really bad games. There's a lot more variation, right? Well, to be honest, no, not really. One of the things I found very, very early on and one of my main complaints about the whole camera grind, and we'll talk about how this could be fixed later on in the video, but one of my main complaints is it's essentially easier and more efficient to do this if you're playing on the hardcore playlist, which means enemies have very little health, so all of the weapons become viable, and if you're playing on a small map mosh pit, so you're playing the same few maps over and over again. I've played so many matches on Shipment and Das House and sometimes Shoot House and Rust occasionally comes up and a couple of others, but mostly Shipment to be honest. And I hate Shipment and I hate Hardcore, I generally hate the small map mosh pit because I think in Modern Warfare 3 the spawns are terrible, you end up dying like three or four times after you die once because you keep getting spawned into bad locations, there's killstreak spam absolutely everywhere, people throwing smoke grenades and flashbangs, it's just chaos, there's very very little skill involved, which I think is why people play Hardcore, it's incredibly easy to get lots of kills in it, just because if you can shoot someone who hasn't seen you, they are one 100% dead, there's absolutely no chance to outplay each other at all. So it's just complete chaos, it's mind numbing and I hated it, and I hated even more that I found myself getting excited when shipment would come up because I knew it was the most efficient way to complete the challenges. And it's not even close, on a normal game of shipment I can fairly easily get between 60 and 90 kills in one game. On some other maps, or if I was playing on normal playlists that aren't hardcore, I might be lucky if I get 15 to 20 kills. Some of these challenges require you to get a huge number of kills just for one camouflage, so Shipman is not just a little bit more efficient than all of the other maps, it's insanely more efficient, and I didn't want this whole process to take any longer than it had to. Now let's start talking about some of the particular camo challenges. One of the big changes they made in Modern Warfare 3 is that they didn't want to focus on long shots anymore. This had been a mainstay of previous games, I think in Modern Warfare 2 all of the Platinum challenges were long shots, and that's a super frustrating thing to do because there's plenty of maps where it's either impossible or very close to impossible to achieve a long shot. You know, a long shot doesn't just require you to do something, but it requires requires enemies to be in the right location. I know there's like one place on shipment if you're standing right at the back or you climb up on something then you can technically get a long shot but it requires enemies to be standing in exactly the right place to get them and that wasn't a huge amount of fun. So for Modern Warfare 3 they decided to do different kinds of challenges. Some of them are kind of fine and I don't mean they're exciting they're not fun to do but they're fine so things like getting hip fire kills or hip fires while strafing or getting kills while you're using a scope or a suppressor or something like that they're absolutely fine they encourage you to build a gun in a certain way maybe not the normal way you do it and i think that's kind of interesting in itself you know if you have to put a scope on something that doesn't normally have a scope you might try and build it in a way that complements that scope. If you need to get lots of hip fire kills, you'll build a gun around being able to do hip firing, and that's kind of interesting in itself. That makes you look at some guns in a slightly different way. Unfortunately, most of the guns that have these challenges aren't very good at those things. So there'll be lots of guns that are like assault rifles that fire in bursts, and it'll say get some strafing hip fire. A way you would never use those guns normally, they're not good at it. You will set up a gun for that particular challenge and then never touch that setup ever again. But that's the best category of challenges I think. 
Then the second category of challenges were slightly annoying, but they were doable. They often required a little bit of luck. So things like getting 10 double kills or getting five kill streaks with a single magazine. That sort of thing is actually a little bit easier than it sounds, especially if you're doing it in the hardcore playlist, but it can be slightly frustrating if you come up against a good team and you just can't string those streaks together. If there's things like lots of kill streak spam, it can get very frustrating very quickly. Then there's another sort of category of these challenges that I found particularly annoying because it requires almost entirely luck and other enemies being in the right place at the right time. These are things like getting kills against enemies that are looking the other way or getting revenge kills or like I said getting long shot kills or one of the worst ones in this category for the grenade launcher there's one where you have to destroy enemy equipment which requires enemies to be using equipment that can easily be destroyed stuff like that is very irritating there's some for the launchers that are like destroying kill streaks and you'd be amazed how many times you can go into the game and no enemies will ever use a kill streak then finally, there's what I consider the most frustrating type of challenge. And this, as far as I know, is unique to Modern Warfare 3. I've never noticed them before. Let me know in the comments if they've appeared in the other games. But these are ones where you have to use a piece of tactical equipment and then kill the enemy that's affected by the tactical equipment. So something like a flashbang or a stun grenade. These are super annoying because most people use a perk which stops you from being affected by these things very much. So let only be affected by them for a very brief second. Also, sometimes you'll get a hit marker on an enemy showing you that you flashed or stunned them. But then when you go out to start shooting, because obviously you had to take cover, you didn't want to get flashed or stunned, you'll end up shooting an enemy that wasn't the one that was flashed or stunned. It'll actually be a different one. If you're playing on hardcore, you're actually flashing and stunning everyone on your team as well, and you're getting hit markers on them, which means it's incredibly hard to work out who's flashed or stunned. So it ends up kind of feeling like chance that you're throwing your tactical grenades and then seeing that you got a hit marker, running in and trying to kill those people as fast as humanly possible, and then often finding maybe one out of the five kills you thought you managed actually counted. It's beyond frustrating, and so many of the weapons had these bloody challenges. It also doesn't help that you can only carry two tactical grenades. Obviously, you can use an ammo box. There's a couple of perks that let you do things like resupplying them off people's bodies. But generally, you're running out of them fairly fast, which means you need to be really careful to organize using another weapon at the same time that you can do some other challenges on while you've run out of stun grenades or flash grenades. There's also one final challenge, which I'm not really sure where to categorize it. Somewhere between the last two categories where you had to get wall penetration kills. That sounds really easy, but you'd be amazed how many maps there are, like Das House, where it doesn't seem like you can do these at all. None of the walls are shootable. Even though it looks like they should be really thin, for some reason it doesn't work. And then there's other maps, like uh, Stash House, where you can apparently just shoot through concrete walls and it's absolutely fine. But only some concrete walls. Some of them don't let you, some of them do. It's so inconsistent. It just gets you to really look at the maps in a different way to work out which walls which sections of the game the designers expected you to want to shoot through and then which ones they actually let you it's very frustrating and i found that actually there was a bit of an exploit for most of these where you could just mount up on a corner where your bullets actually clipped the corner as you shot through them and then that would count as a wall bang or you could shoot through a door just shut a door and then shoot through it to kill someone there was a few that had exploits to get around this so they didn't end up being too annoying but this combination of needing to complete challenges that made you do irritating things and often you ended up just camping in a certain situation because it was the best place to get that type of kill while also having to play hardcore on the small map mosh pit while also having to rely on the enemy players doing the exact behavior you needed for that particular challenge it's just a recipe for frustration it was so annoying and yes, I eventually completed it, but I don't feel any sense of accomplishment. I just feel like I've wasted my time in an arbitrary grind the developers put in to increase the average time played. I did it because I thought it would be kind of interesting content for streams, and it was okay. But I can't understand why anyone would normally do it if they didn't have an audience wanting to watch something. 
having Interstellar doesn't show you're good at the game, it just shows that you are willing to spend a lot of time doing something stupid and repetitive to get an admittedly okay looking camouflage. So that's enough whining out of the way, I just wanted to vent really, I was so fed up after I spent so long doing that, so little of my time doing it was fun. I think now's a good time to talk about how they could improve the camo grind. I don't think they should get rid of it, I know lots of people love doing the camo grind every year in Call of Duty, I just think there's a much better way of doing it that would not only be good for the players who are doing it, but would actually be good for everyone else playing the game too. So first of all, I think the camos should be linked to what that gun is designed to do. I'm sure every weapon in Call of Duty, a designer has sat down and thought, okay, this will be really, really good for high movement, running around, trying to flank enemies, or this gun will be really good for setting up and holding an objective, or this gun will be really good at taking out campers or whatever it is. Why don't they design the camo challenges around that? Instead of finding a long range burst assault rifle and saying, yeah, we should make people do hip fire strafing with that, why not try and encourage people to play with the attachments and find a method of setting up something that is exactly what the designers had in mind for that gun? And it doesn't even really have to revolve around killing. It could be something like, okay, try and set up this high speed SMG to let you run as fast as humanly possible and break this speed record or set up this sniper rifle for the longest possible shot that you can imagine if it's, you know, a Warzone challenge because Black Ops 6 is coming with Warzone challenges. And then it would encourage people to try and think about the attachments, think about what would help them do it. And then once they've done that and they've pulled it off once, that should be enough to unlock the camo. I've got no idea why when you've proven that you can do something, you then need to show that you can do it 15 more times. If there's a weapon that's designed around holding an objective, why not have something that says, okay, use this to defend an objective in hardpoint for this many seconds within one match. That would be really good for everybody else on the team because they've got somebody using a weapon that is expressly designed for holding a point well, and then that person is going to be trying to complete the objective. Maybe that fast moving SMG could also have a challenge where you have to capture a flag in capture the flag. The designers could really drill down into how they want people to play the game. And of course, there could be different options for some guns. You know, some guns are very versatile and they could be like, OK, let's have one challenge focused on defending objectives, one challenge on attacking objectives, one challenge on going on a kill streak, one challenge on being able to move around really quickly or use the Omni movement in an interesting way. They could have a set of different challenges for a gun, but each one should just encourage the players who are doing that challenge to do something useful, to play in a positive way for the entire team. Then when it comes to the mastery camos, I've got an idea for that too. So everything I've been talking about, the challenges designed around showing off what a gun can do and encouraging players to use the guns in the way they were designed to be used, that could all lead to you getting the gold challenge. So if you complete all of those camouflages, you unlock the gold challenge. And I think the gold challenge for every single gun should be get a five kill streak, get a bloodthirsty, just one. You don't need to do it over and over again, just do it once. For lots of people, they'll fly through that absolutely no problem. And for some people, that will be a huge accomplishment. Then when it comes to trying to get the next challenge, the platinum challenge, after you've done all of the weapons in that sort of section, the next one could be, okay, now get a 10 kill streak. And that's what you have to do to unlock the platinum or the equivalent of the platinum. And then the final one could be a 15 kill streak. I'm not saying people should be trying to get a nuke with every weapon. I don't think that's realistic. But at least if you saw somebody with whatever the one between Platinum and uh, Damascus or Interstellar, whatever the top one is in Black Ops 6, that top mastery one, you could see somebody has managed to do at least a 15 kill streak with that gun. That would mean something. I feel like 
that would be impressive and it's one of those things where it's no longer a grind you're not just having to do the same thing over and over again so you're not going to be just playing the same maps over and over again for dozens of hours because that's the most efficient way to do it instead it's something that you can see as a singular achievement something that you can try to achieve once maybe there'll be a particular map and a particular mode that you think works really well for it but you're only going to have to do it once so you're not going to have to spend hours doing something you don't want to do then finally, when someone's unlocked the final mastery camo, that shows you that they have mastered every single gun in the game. They've not only completed the challenges, completed the things that only that gun can do. They've sort of maximized what that gun was designed to do, but they've also shown that they can go on an impressive kill streak. I think a 15 kill streak is impressive for the vast majority of Call of Duty players that they've done that for all of those guns. And then that's kind of a real accomplishment. You see someone doing that, you know they are very good at the game. And even better, while for lots of people that will still be a grind, it will still take them a very long time to accomplish all of that, some people will be able to race through it very, very quickly. And you won't get people doing that race to mastery and still taking dozens of hours and staying up an unhealthy amount of time and sort of trying to burn through it in the first, you know, couple of weeks that the game is out. Instead, the very, very best players will be able to absolutely fly through it and really show off their skill. I think that would be an exciting race to mastery to watch if you could see some of those very, very best Call of Duty players absolutely plowing through all these different weapons and getting to grips with them, showing off how they're meant to be used, and then getting those 15 kill streaks. So anyway, that's my idea on what's wrong with the current camo grind and how they could improve it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Goodbye.